Greetings, fellas. This is a 2008 Fender Super Champ XD. It's a hybrid modeling tube guitar amplifier, but doesn't make coffee. Let's check this out. There it is. They kind of got inspired by the look of uh, the 60s Fender amps. It's pretty neat. Let's have a look at the front panel, shall we? I'm a little concerned about these rust spots here. I hope no liquid got into the, the amplifier itself. Front panel is pretty simple. Input volume one for the clean channel. Here you have the channel selector. An LED that tells you that this second channel is used. Uh, gain, volume, and the voice switch. It's a pretty neat arrangement. This is basically the modeling part. The voice um, positions. Yeah, the, the amplifier tries to emulate with a DSP some of the most famous amps like a 50s Fender, 60s Fender, um, British, a uh, little overdrive, and even high gain, hard rock, metal. Pretty cool. The tone stack is treble and bass, kind of classic. The tone stack works for both channels, which is interesting. And there we have the FX and the FX selector, FX level, obviously. Reverb, chorus, delay, vibratone, Mm, pretty neat arrangement. Super Champ XD, vintage modified tube amplifier, whatever it means. And um, this is uh, pretty cool. It's the pilot light, and uh, I prefer this. It looks like a, a jewel type, not like uh, just a simple LED poking out. Pretty neat. The back of the amplifier tells you that this is not a vintage amplifier. Lots of warnings. Warning here, the ISE socket another warning here for the fuse the power switch speaker connector nice logo here a product of fender musical instrument corporation in california usa made in china and a lot of people have a, some kind of a beef with chinese made amplifier and sometimes they do but you have to keep in mind that uh, in the late 90s early 2000s any uh, tube guitar amplifier was uh, pretty expensive. I'm talking like uh, 1,000 to 1,500 bucks. In the mid 2000s, they uh, began selling tube amplifiers made in China and uh, the price dropped significantly. Another warning here, line out and foot switch. And another warning. These are tubes, well, we can see the sockets here. I can definitely spot a Chinese made 12H7. Fender special design, stock speaker. And on the side, you have the tube chart 6V6 GTE and 12H7. I removed these screws here and the other here. And now I'm gonna lift this panel. It may get a little tacky over time, but don't be afraid. Oh, wait. Cobwebs. I'm gonna clean this off. These are the tubes, 6V6 GT and 6V6 GT over here. Okay, this one is, this one is a Chinese one. You can always spot Chinese tubes with this. Uh, let's show you this. It's definitely one uh, of the telltales that it's a Chinese made tube. It's, uh, Fender 12AX7, okay. Removing a tube with these tube retainers means you have to spread them with your fingers and kind of rock the tube by holding it onto its socket and bumping it to the camera, but hey, whatever you want. So you can see here, 6V6 GT Electroharmonics made in Russia, 0805, definitely a 2008 model. You may be able to see a slight discoloration into the logo, but it's barely seen. I have some suspicions, you know, that this amplifier has not been used a lot. Oh, look at that. Balton tube sockets, very good quality. The tubes feed quite snugly inside them. I like that. Most of the time, the tubes from your guitar amplifier are either made in China, just like this one, 
or Russia. This groove tube here has got this marking made in Russia, 1402. And uh, the third place they come from is uh, from JJ in Slovakia. There are some others, uh, niche manufacturers of electronic tubes in the world, but they don't make uh, the tubes we use in guitar amps. These are usually uh, high-end audiophile tubes or for special applications. This is not a full feature tube tester. It's uh, basically an emission and shorts. So you have this uh, little light bulb, neon light bulb here that will light up if there is any problem with the tube. And uh, we're gonna check the emission and see how these tubes perform. So I'm gonna use the, gonna check the first 6v6 here. Okay, are we ready to see how it performs? Hmm, look at that. The tube performs just fine. Hmm, interesting. Let's check the other one, shall we? And now we're gonna check the emission of this tube. Hmm, and once again, look at that. Pretty similar, pretty similar to the previous tube, which is uh, some kind of a good news. It means that I was um, right in my assumption that this amplifier has not seen a lot of use. So these tubes are gonna be just fine to run in my amplifier. Now let's have a look at the schematic of this amp. This is the 12AX7 tube, it's a double triode, and you see one, two triodes. The first triode here is a preamp tube, while the second one is the phase inverter. Basically what it does is uh, it prepares the signal to be fed to the power tubes, which are over here. And for your information, this is uh, in a cathode follower layout. What does interest us me is this, you can see here, negative bias, and um, the cathodes are connected to the ground. It means it's a fixed bias amp, so you have to be able to set the bias onto your amplifier. What the Fender did here, they added this R20, which is a 1 watt, 1 ohm precision resistor. It's pretty interesting because um, you, that way you can just measure the voltage drop across this resistor and uh, the fender is nice enough to tell you that you need 40 millivolts DC and if you go right here they tell you that you have to adjust R6 which is a potentiometer to achieve 40 millivolts DC at TP22. Uh, whereas TP22, it's over there, so it's the cathode from the 6v6. Just put the tubes back in, made a marking to see which one goes where. You guys, viewers, might have seen that I put this groove tube instead of the original Fender 12AX7. Well, I was not paying attention, and uh, it's not a problem anyway. We're gonna open up this amp and have a look inside. Good news, everyone. Remember the rust spots? Well, it looks like no liquid went inside the chassis. Ah, here's the money shot. R20 is over here, and R6, the potentiometer, is over there. So, what I have to do now is to take out my multimeter and uh, connect it to the test points. Meter is connected to the ground and to pin 8 of the tube. Now I'm gonna plug this in and see what the reading says. Before doing any further investigations we have to wait a few seconds for the voltages to rise. So it's at uh, 35.2 milliamps, it's uh, close, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes. After a few minutes we are at 35 millivolts DC, so we're gonna turn the little potentiometer of just a little bit, okay. Yeah, it's good like this. 